Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Kryptonize. Joining me today is Klaus Scanning, CEO of DigiShares, a real treat today. And we're going to talk about all sorts of things going on in the space and what DigiShares is doing in the space to help all of us realize what we all know is coming. And that is the securitization, the tokenization of real world assets, whether it be real estate or other large uh, debt instruments or corporation cap tables, you name it, it's going to happen. That is the future, whether it's a year from now or five years from now. So with that, before I jump in, let's hear from Klaus on his background. Yeah, hello, and nice uh, to be here, and uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, yeah, so my name is Klaus. I'm the CEO of and one of the co-founders of uh, DDCS. I have a background as a researcher, PhD in computer science with a specialty in AI. Uh, and I actually worked in AI for a number, number of years, starting a company also in the space, but uh, sort of got demotivated by the lack of results, uh, real achievement in the AI space and then switch over to uh, blockchain about six, seven years ago. as a kind of career decision, I would say, and uh, starting also a company before this one that didn't uh, work out, and then sort of uh, discovered that there was a real need for infrastructure for tokenization. Uh, when we started looking at this five years ago, the, the, the existing providers uh, weren't very good, and uh, there weren't... Uh, uh, the space was really poorly developed, so there was we actually spotted a good business opportunity, but yeah, it, it's taken some years to get to this stage. The first couple of years weren't too interesting, and uh, the demand was was quite limited, and uh, I think the, the the space was really underdeveloped. The pieces uh, were not were just not there. But now, of course, it's it's a good place to be. I would say it's developing fast, and um. And, and I'm not regretting too much that I didn't stay in AI. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the beauty is you can combine AI with yeah. what we're doing That's eventually. Right. At some point, there's going to be an intersection. Right now, it's you know creating content. Um, there might be some decisions that are made in terms of KYC, AML, where AI could step in yeah. and, and help uh, make sure that both of those check marks are, are checked. But uh, I'll leave it to you guys that are creating these platforms and, and able to do or are able to do that. So tell us a little bit about the market today. Um, you know, you, you, we really haven't taken off. We're, we're in that phase of crossing the chasm. Yes. You know, an old Jeffrey Moore uh, reference. Yeah. First of all, where are we? And then what is it going to take to cross the chasm? I have my opinions on it, but uh, yeah. I, I want to hear from you. Yeah, actually, I agree 100%. We are definitely crossing the chasm right now. Uh, the tokenization space has been overhyped, as, as so many other new industries. And uh, whereas last year was uh, extremely easy with customers uh, coming from left and right and uh, signing up uh, without much effort from our side, this year it's it's different. I think I think this, the 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 industry has matured to some degree, and of course we also have a, a global crisis on our hands. But but I also think it's it's a sign of maturity and uh, growing up. Uh, so the clients are now more mature. They are asking better questions. Uh, they are better educated. They uh, ask for real use cases, real references. Uh, they ask for better integration and they sort of understand the pieces that we need to put together in order to provide value. They ask for real liquidity, which is something the space still cannot properly deliver. So yeah, so I, we're definitely crossing the chasm and I think that you know, to get to the other side, we need to provide real, demonstrate real value, provide real use cases, right? And uh, and uh, and get the last pieces in place. But, but we're also working on that and uh, there's a lot of companies uh, collaborating to make it happen, to educate, to sort of spread the the, the word about tokenization and uh, and to, to work with our many clients to uh, produce real value. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, we do need more use cases, although there are some emerging right now. Uh, my biggest problem is in signing up for these things. It's like harder to sign up uh, for an account on some of these exchanges than it is just to get a brokerage account. And I'm like, why is that? I mean, aren't they going through the same process? 
Um, and, and maybe it's just the attorneys have stepped in and said, hey, you know, we're under scrutiny by the SEC. Let's make sure that we, we do this absolutely right. Maybe that's it. I, I don't know. So that's number one hindrance I, I see. The second one is liquidity. When people go and they look at the liquidity of some of these uh, tokens that are out there, it's not just there. Uh, it, it's So that needs to happen. And I don't know, are there not any market makers that are helping here? Or are the offerings not good enough? Or is it just this new space that's not quite crypto, it's not quite stocks and, and bonds, it's something kind of in between. And, and so how do we get the liquidity going there? Because the value is, first of all, way more secure. And second of all, long term, if you hold on to some of these things, these real estate projects, you never get inv invited to, or some of these companies, you never get invited to invest in because all you have is $10,000. It seems to me that there'd be a lot of people interested in doing this uh, if only they knew there's an easier way and, they, and only if they knew about it and they saw liquidity. So if they needed to get out, they could get yeah. out. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. Uh, all, again, 100%. Uh, I think lack of adoption is due to poor usability still of the, the providers in the space. Um, it's, a young, it's a young industry and I think usability is, is not where it, it could be yet compared to existing sort of non-crypto, non-blockchain solutions out there. Um, it's difficult still to get a wallet, to get a USDC and sort of to get into the space. And the solutions are also not uh, really, really user-friendly yet. So that's one, I think, hindrance. Another one is, as you're saying, I think that uh, companies in the space, including us, we are sort of overly strict on complying with KYC and AML and so on and sort of maybe making it a little bit too difficult for users to uh, to sign up. And then it's definitely about liquidity, right? So uh, liquidity hasn't uh, developed as fast as expected, I would say. It's taken longer, but it's, it's also started at a, a very low point. And I think that it actually grew like a factor 10 from 21 to 22. And I think that something similar is expected for 23. So it's coming, it's just starting from a low point. Uh, I, also, I also have to say that from a user perspective or investor perspective, there's not much difference in investing on a security token exchange in, in, in a tokenized real estate compared to a REIT on an existing exchange as it is right now. Uh, the real benefit is actually on the issuer or the, the asset owner side because it's much less, much less expensive to list. Way less. Um, and and it, 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 it gives maybe other other options. I would say the, the real value comes when some of these exchanges it integrates with DeFi, it gets new functionality from DeFi and where, and when we also sort of integrate with DeFi lending and other innovation from the DeFi ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, great point on both of them. It is far less expensive to list. Try listing on the stock, stock exchange, even the pink sheets, you know, it's extremely expensive. And then when you do combine this with DeFi, uh, I mean, anything's possible at that point. Um, but how, okay, so how how do we get more liquidity in the system? You think is it an awareness thing or is it an ease of use thing? Tell me how we get more liquidity. So basically, on on liquidity, it's not just up to the exchanges; it's up to all the the parties in the ecosystem, the issuance platforms, uh, custodians. Uh, stablecoin providers, uh, wallet providers, and, and everyone, right, making it easier for, for users to get into the to the ecosystem and then also to sort of get onto the exchanges. And But then it's also up to the exchanges to, to, yeah, to market better, to make more usable platforms and so on and get more assets listed. I think especially they've been slow in listing more, <coughs> more assets. Uh, they they don't have a good selection, and some of the assets that are listed are are, are not liquid at all, right? The, because the the, the uh, owners are not interested interested to sell, basically. So it's so it's yeah, it's it's it has to develop on many different uh, parameters. Yeah, I mean, but there's we know the demands out there. Uh, I think there's a fear yeah. from some of these uh, if it's real estate or or company or people that own these debt instruments, I think it's a fear of, uh, you know, yeah. what's going to happen here. Like, and, and it goes back to, okay, there yeah. aren't some, there aren't people promoting these successful use cases all that much. Um, nope. and, and, and we're going to do that. We're going to focus on some of these projects and get some of these project owners uh, to talk about it. Yeah. And, and therefore we can get uh, people like the Grant Cardones that are interested in this, but doesn't know how to answer it, yeah. uh, more interested yeah. in it. 
Um, and I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm working on getting that meeting set up for us, by the way. We need more visibility like that. We need some more successful use cases. And um, I, I think liquidity is, is going to be the thing that once we get over that hump, uh, this thing's going to burst open. So tell me about DigiShares and, and how, what does DigiShares do in this uh, environment? And then how are they c contributing? How are you contributing to the ecosystem? I, I know that you just uh, signed a deal um, with a, a new provider uh, called Oasis Pro yeah. that uh, could help with a liquidity issue. But I know I've asked you like four questions in that, yeah. but kind of roll through that for us. Yeah, so so DTS is uh, basically uh, from the start, we were, we've been providing sort of infrastructure technology for the space, but primarily for issuance, the primary issuance and sort of actually tokenizing the asset, minting the tokens, representing the, to the token legally and sort of connecting the token to the, the legal asset underneath, uh, managing investors, the sort of investor onboarding, KYC, e-signing, but also sort of compliance, share cap table management, uh, corporate actions, dividends, and so on. And actually also internal trading using a bulletin board as a kind of walled garden within the system uh, for, uh, for uh, existing shareholders. So, so actually kind of a standalone tool that a, an asset owner can use sort of to get some initial uh, value, cost reduction, automation, digitization, um, more easy, easy handling of many investors, but also sort of internal liquidity um, and sort of uh, adoption or sort of uh, incorporation into the crypto ecosystem. So that's what we've been doing, and we've been building up quite a good business in that space. Uh, we have around 120 clients now globally, with the majority in the US. And um, and um, we've been uh, sort of uh, also looking at liquidity options for the last couple of years and looking for good places for our clients to list, uh, but not really seeing any sort of materialize, especially not in the real estate space. So we decided to launch our own exchange. Uh, real estate dot exchange, which will be coming out in a couple of months, and will be focused on on real estate assets, of course. And when you say white label, does that mean um, who would come in? Have you guys support them and and usher them through the process? How how would that work? Yeah, so white label basically means that, uh, of course, they can uh, customize and uh, brand the system so it looks like it's their own, and sort of data shares will not be visible, uh, except by power by data shares or something like that. So, so our focus is on making solutions that are highly customizable and flexible and integratable. So, so they can basically be used by the client, integrated into the existing systems and customized as as as, as they want. Either, uh, yeah, a simple customization, just changing colors, fonts, and so on, but also a deep customization where they actually change the entire user interface for the system and also the the workflows in the system. So, wonderful. All right, so how do people engage DigiShares? How, how would that work? Uh, if you had a, let's just say it's a real estate developer that wanted to tokenize three or four of their projects, how would they do that? Yeah, so uh, basically we have some, some uh, sort of introductory meetings, of course, to discuss the project and uh, sort of assess viability and uh, the scope and, and so on of, of the project. And we have many discussions or discussions often about how to in reach investors and uh, the jurisdiction uh, of, of the, the project itself and so on. Uh, the legal aspects is still quite uh, sort of uh, challenging in many uh, countries. Um, and then if they uh, sign up, we go into a process where we assist both on the technical, the business and the legal side. We have a legal counsel who can assist with sort of guidance along the way. Of course, we have a lot of business sort of understanding from doing many projects over, over the years. Um, and then, of course, on the technical side, we install the system and set it up for the client and to get them get them started. Then the idea is basically that it's it's a self service model, right? So they they use the system on their own and uh, become hopefully independent from us uh, after a short time and can start sort of tokenizing their assets and getting them listed on uh, exchanges if they want. Otherwise, just using the system sort of internally. Wonderful. Okay. All right. And uh, where do they go in order to to get more information? They can go to our homepage, uh, ddcs.io, or to our Telegram channel, our LinkedIn group, Twitter. We are uh, everywhere. We are also uh, we are also going out there, right? So we do masterclasses. We're going to Palo Alto in in May, um, in Las Vegas in September, I believe, November in New York, 
London, also in New York. So we'll be out there doing masterclasses. And then, of course, we have also a monthly webinar. Okay. And uh, I know about your webinars. These masterclasses are what? To help people learn how to tokenize their assets? What are the masterclasses about? Masterclasses are basically a deep dive into the tokenization uh, space, I would say. So we speak about the industry, the, the players, the state of the art, use cases, um, practical uh, sort of roadmap for how to actually do it. Um, and uh, yeah, go do spend a couple of hours. We typically invite one or two clients also to speak. Uh, there's often a legal partner that's present as well. So we cover all the angles, basically. All right, we're going to put that in the show notes or on the screen of these master classes to get, allow you to get some more information. There's also, so they put on some webinars. So with that, Klaus, uh, really yeah. appreciate your time today. Thanks for the explanations. And uh, we seem to be in, in, in agreement as to the state of the market. So uh, with that, yeah. thank you very much. Hey, folks, my name is Mark Fidelman. I am the host of Kryptonized. And I have a special tip for you today. It's TetraGuard. You can find it at tetraguard.io. This is the first decentralized ETF with consists of Bitcoin, PaxG, and Ethereum. I recommend this. If you just want to get crypto the easy way and have some solid crypto uh, tokens that are in this particular ETF, then TetraGuard is the way to go. Check it out.